Hello again. Time for more accounting. If you are at or past your breaking point, that's totally appropriate for what we're going to talk about today because our topic for today is break-even points. Uh, we're not looking at it from the standpoint of you pulling out your hair and trying to figure out problems in Cengage. We're talking about it from the standpoint of a business and how much they need to sell in order to break even. And you might hear that and say, well, that's dumb. Why do we, why do we care to make a calculation that tells us where we break even? Isn't the whole point of business to make a profit? And you're right, but what a break-even point does, it tells us what level we can't fall below Otherwise, we go into a loss situation. So it's a pretty important kind of calculation. And the good news is it's really simple to do. So let's get into this, and I'll kind of show you what break-even point is. Uh, essentially, break-even point is where our total revenue equals our total cost. So if our revenue is 100 and our total cost is 100, we would have a profit of zero. So it's even Stevens, no loss, no profit, total revenue equals total cost. Okay, so our calculation as far as how we would calculate break-even points is very simple and straightforward, unlike every other thing we've done in here. So break-even point is going to be your fixed cost on top of a fraction that has something on the bottom or in the denominator called contribution margin. Now that might be a new term for you. All contribution margin is, and it kind of requires a separate calculation, it's real simple though all it is is our revenue per unit our selling price per unit and we're going to subtract from that the variable cost per unit okay so all this is the contribution margin is how much is every unit we are selling contributing to the coverage of our fixed cost okay so fixed cost divided by contribution margin gives us a break-even point and we can look at break-even point in units, that's, or we could look at it in dollars, and we'll look at a problem where we kind of go through both of those calculations. So that's BEP. The second topic we need to tackle today is called CVP analysis, and CVP stands for cost, volume, profit analysis. And the idea here is, instead of trying to figure out just where we break even, we can actually manipulate cost, volume, and profit and come up with a lot of different kind of projections and scenarios as far as looking forward. So let's say we wanted to get a profit of $100,000 as opposed to just breaking even. That's where CVP analysis comes into play. And our break-even point is actually the foundation for CVP analysis. So we'll look at break-even point and get that hammered home. And then we'll look at CVP analysis and how it works. Well, how about a break-even example? What I have up here it's a company called Lano Lamps, and they've given us a little bit of info for their revenue. They have a little bit of info on their cost setup, and they want to know the break-even point in units and the break-even point in dollars. So if you remember back, can you remember the formula I just showed you? Hopefully. If you don't, look it up. You're going to have to take your fixed cost to get break-even point in units and divide them by your, you got it, contribution margin. So let's look at that. We're given fixed cost of 90,000. So let's plug that in at the top. And we're given $70 for revenue and $40 cost. Remember contribution margin is your revenue per unit minus your variable cost per unit. So our formula would end up being 90,000 over 30. Or if we do the math on that, we get 3,000 units. We have to sell 3,000 units of product with that cost structure in order to break even. So that's part A. Part B wants you to know the break even point in dollars. Real simple, we've already figured out the units that we need to make to break even. To get the dollar amount, we just take those units and multiply it by the amount we sell per unit, or the price per unit, I should say. So when we multiply that out, and you get two hundred and ten thousand dollars so our BEP in units will be three thousand units that's the answer to part A our BEP in dollars would be two hundred and ten thousand dollars which would be your answer to part B and I know what you're thinking it can't possibly be that easy well it is that's all there is to it just you remember your formula remember how to get your contribution margin and you can calculate the break-even point all day long 
Okay, now that we have BEP down, break even point, let's go forward and talk about CVP, cost, volume, profit. And again, the idea here is that we can take our cost data or our sales volume data and manipulate it in such a way that we can generate a profit that we desire. Something other than zero that we calculated during our BEP uh, problem. What I've done at the beginning, up at the top here, I've taken the info from the problem and kind of just copied it down. So revenue was 180. Uh, the company had variable cost of 30, 25, and 17. I've added all those together to give us a total variable cost per unit. And then they gave us a couple of numbers for our fixed cost. So I've uh, uh, kind of added those together over here. The problem wants us to go through and do a couple of different things. So we'll just walk through those. You can read those on A through E there. A wants to know our contribution margin per unit. And again, it's the exact same idea as when we calculated that when we were doing BEP problems. We're just going to take our revenue per unit and subtract from that our variable cost per unit. So in our problem, revenue was 180 per unit, variable was 72. So our contribution margin would have been $108 a unit. Every unit we sell contributes $108 towards covering our fixed cost. B wants to know a contribution margin ratio. Uh, we haven't really talked about that yet, but it's pretty simple to calculate, and it begins with our contribution margin. We just take that and divide it by our revenue per unit. That's all there is to it. You do the math on that, and you'll get something like 60%. So that's A and B. So far, so good. C wants to know what our break-even point is in units, and we're pretty good at calculating that by now. All we really need to do take our fixed cost and divide them by our contribution margin, right? You guys can do that. 62, 640 divided by our margin of 108. So if we do the math on that, so if we do the math on that, we should get 62, 640 divided by 108 is 580 units. In order to break even, we have to sell 580 units of product. A problem doesn't want to know the break-even point in dollar amounts, but you know we're pretty cool, so we'll just go ahead and calculate it since we know how. Let's go ahead and take that 580 and multiply it by 180 per unit sold, and we should get a number that tells us our break-even point in dollars there. I get 104,400. That's our break-even point in dollars. We can actually calculate that a second way. In D, it says using our CM ratio, what is the break-even point in sales dollars? So there's another mysterious way to calculate it here. Real easy. All we're going to do is plug in our fixed cost, 62,640, and divide them by the contribution margin ratio, like it says in the problem to do. So if we do that, we get 104,400. Again. We can calculate it using the break-even point and then multiplying it by the dollar per unit sell price. Or we can use it, the CM ratio and calculate it that way. Either way, you get the exact same thing. In part E, they want to know how many units we have to sell if we want to earn a pre-tax profit of $51,840. And this is actually not that hard. We just kind of pretend that we're doing a BE P problem, only we add that pre-tax profit into it as something that we need to cover. So when we do a BEP calculation, we always start with fixed cost. Now we're going to add a profit, a pre-tax profit I should say, to that and then divide it by our contribution margin. So our fixed cost for 62, 640, now we need to add to that another number that we want to cover. 51,840 in pre-tax profit. So we divide that by our CM of 108 and that gives us how many units we need to sell to make that $51,840 pre-tax profit. So I'm going to bring up my calculator. 62,640 plus 51,840 and we're going to divide that by 108 and I get 1060 in order to make my pre-tax profit of $51,840 I need to sell 
1060 units. So that's a basic CVP analysis. Again, the CVP part really comes into play here in Part E, where we're trying to determine with our given cost structure how many we have to sell to make a pre-tax profit of 51,840. That's the idea behind CVP. Now, to kind of continue our example of CVP, we're going to add another layer to it. Before, when we calculated CVP, we were looking at a pre-tax profit, uh, and now we're looking at an after-tax profit, if we want to actually consider profits after taxes. It just requires a, another hoop or two to jump through mathematically, but it's really not that hard. We're, we'll use the same data as we had in the problem before, only this time we're going to say we have a 30% tax rate to contend with, and we're looking at after-tax profits. So, what I'm going to do for A is I'm going to turn that after-tax profit into a pre-tax profit. And the way I do that is I simply take that after-tax profit and divide it by 1 minus the tax rate. So if I take 135,800 and divide it by 70%, 1 minus 30 percent that should give me a pre-tax profit that would be do a little math here 135,800 divided by 70 percent 194,000 so in order to get a after-tax profit of 135,800 I need to have a pre-tax profit of 194,000 from this point, we can kind of go about it the same way as we would a traditional break-even point problem. We just take our fixed cost and then add pre-tax profit and then divide by our contribution margin. Okay, So our fixed cost, if you remember in the last problem, was 62640 We're going to add to them a pre-tax profit of 194000 and then divide the whole shebang by 108 bucks at our CM. Okay? We go through all that, we should get a good answer here. So let's go back to our calculator. 62,640 plus 194,000 pre tax profit. Divide that by 108, and we get 2,376 units. That's how many units we have to sell in order to get a profit. I should say an after-tax profit of 135800 B, same kind of idea, only now we're looking at an after-tax profit on every unit sold. So we're going to approach it a little bit different way. We still need to figure out what that after-tax prof, uh, profit is in its pre-tax equivalent. So what we'll do to do that is we're simply going to take that 720 after-tax per unit profit we desire and again, divide it by 1 minus the tax rate. So 720 divided by 70%. Okay. 720 divided by 0.70, we get 1029 per unit. That is our pre-tax profit that we need to earn per unit in order to get an after-tax profit that we desire, that 720. So I'm going to take that, since we're talking per unit, and I'm going to add that to the variable cost kind of that we is another item that we need to cover. So our fixed cost divided by contribution margin, we're going to do our basic basically a break even formula. The only difference is I'm going to kind of tweak the CM part. 62640 was our fixed cost. Our contribution margin that we had before was 108. Well, I'm going to back that down $10.29 to kind of account for that extra profit that I need to earn. And another way to look at it is basically our sell price is 180. I'm going to subtract from that the 72 that I originally had. I'm going to subtract from that another 1029. And that would be kind of what I'd use for my contribution margin there. So calculator time. 180 minus 72 minus 1029, I get 9771. So let's plug that in down here at the bottom. Bring up our calculator, do the math here. 
and we get 641 units. In order to earn our after-tax profit of 720 per unit, we need to be able to sell 641 units. So that's kind of how you would handle that.